Hello. I'd like to share with you a lovely chat Kasia and myself had with Lucinda Fortier, who is the head of product at Big Hand and also the author of an amazing podcast called The Prodbox, which has been gaining a lot of worldwide attention recently. Enjoy watching the conversation. Ladies, I'm very happy. Uh, we should meet for a cup of tea today. I've got my tea with me as well. Here. Got my tea. <laughs> and uh, I want to speak about something which is extremely interesting for us. Um, uh, it is especially interesting for product owners uh, and product managers. I've been in product management for around nine years, and I think really key for me is that I'm passionate about what I do. I enjoy what I do. I love creating products. I love creating products that customers love. Um, you know, the process of creating products, so doing user research, usability testing, the design aspect, and actually solving problems, because that's really key to product management, is understanding your customer or user's problems and solving them. And, you know, throughout my career, I've had a number of roles. I've had product owner roles, product manager roles, now head of product delivery at Big Hand. And, you know, each of those roles has has had different impacts and, and, and different challenges. But, you know, I've enjoyed that journey. And I think it's just my my passion, determination and just having fun with it, just really enjoying what I, what I do. And, and that's, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to start the Podbox is to share that knowledge as well. So uh, was the product owner the first role you had when you entered the whole IT environment? Or Well, actually, funnily enough, um, I started the first role in product management I had uh, was an, as an assistant product manager. And at that time, uh, the company that I was working for was not working in an agile way. We were working in a very waterfall way. So, you know, functional specification documents, um, BRDs, business requirements documents, very much we're going to build this thing and it take you however long to build it, then you deploy it. So it was very different to how we work now. And, you know, the agility of development teams is you know, apparent everybody is moving to that way of working and moving from waterfall to a more agile way. So funnily enough, it wasn't a product owner role, but very soon after I started as an assistant product manager, we then started to think about working in a more agile way and then adopted Scrum. And then I entered into the realm of product ownership. Okay. Uh, I'm just asking because... Uh I think I've never met anybody who started with the product management like uh, from the scratch. Like usually people just evolve, like they enter yeah. the IT being um, developers. I myself started uh, as a developer and then you just you know, uh, sway into some other direction. So that's curious. So yeah. For, like uh, <laughs> 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 straight product management <laughs> and I haven't left. <laughs> so <laughs> and I've loved it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh I mean, okay, so obviously we wanted to ask you like what was your main uh uh driver to uh start the podcast? Yeah, so I decided to start the podcast because we know that 2020 has been a very crazy year, you know, it's with COVID and, you know, a lot of things have been happening this year. And I've had more time to think about, you know, how I can give back and, and how I can do more with what I enjoy, which is product management. So I'm a fan of learning and sharing knowledge. And I really wanted the pod box to reflect that. So as I said, I enjoy what I do and I just want to share that passion with others. I, I like to, to learn new ways of working. So the aim was to share those ways of working and invite guests along to share ways of working that have worked for them in the past or not so much and just share experiences so we can all learn. And the pod box is aimed at, at those who are, you know, wanting to start out in product management or maybe thinking about making the move. But then also, um, I would want to attract people who are working in product management as a product manager or a product owner as well, just to share, share the knowledge and to learn. And while I, while I learn, to share what I learn and hopefully they get something out of it. 
Uh, yeah, that's a good point because you're mentioning product ownership and product management all the way, but uh, perhaps it's not so clear uh, definition for everybody. So maybe you could, as an expert, share like what does it mean for you to act as a product manager, product owner? Well, this is the discussion. It's quite a common discussion in the product space at the moment. And funnily enough, the first episode of the podcast is product owner versus product yep. manager. Um, so, you know, a bite-sized 20-minute episode, just exploring the differences between the two. And I think ultimately, when we're looking at both roles, it's tactical versus strategic, in my opinion. You know, so the product owner role, you know, if it's very um, focused around agile and the scrum way of working. That's where the product owner was kind of birthed from. And it's focusing on, you know, prioritizing your backlog, working with your stakeholders, being the, the voice of the customer uh, for your development team, for stakeholders throughout the business, and really trying to get everyone rallied around your your vision and, and prioritizing your backlog. And I think as it's a more tactical role, when you compare it to the product manager role, which is a more strategic and commercial role, thinking about why are we building what we're building and uh, really understanding the research. So researching the market, looking at value proposition, uh, turning that into, you know, why we're doing what we're doing, understanding the business problem. But then, you know, there, there is a bit of an overlap between the two roles because both roles need to understand the, the market direction, need to understand the customer problem, need to speak to customers, you know, working on qualitative and quantitative data. So it's, there is a bit of an overlap and you may find in some organizations, the product manager does both roles, the product owner may do both roles. Um, or there, there, there exists a product owner and product manager in an organization. So it really is what works for your organization, but it is it, it does boil down to tactical versus strategic. So the what versus the why when we're looking at product owner versus product manager. I also remember, I think it, you mentioned in uh, the episode that uh, it, the easy way to differentiate is if you uh, bear with budget and money, you are like this is an easy way to say you're the product manager like more committing to this role and the other way around is as you said like being more hands-on with the team yeah 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 exactly exactly yeah right that's definitely right because you have to understand how do you measure success of your products but both roles have to do that but Often enough, a product manager is responsible for, you know, the P&L for the product. It might not be the case in some organizations, but often you will see that they are responsible for the product. They are the product's CEO. So trying to understand how is our product, is our product successful and how can we ensure that it is going to be? Okay, so... Um, so uh, what is also curious for me, um, because I work a lot with, with, with clients and our partners, and I'm, I'm trying to understand how to help them work yeah. with us in a, in a very good way, in a, in a product way, in a, in a partnership way. And uh, I'm, I'm very curious uh, about the, the most common problems um, that product owners face that we could also address. And, and, and uh, if you see that there are any ways we can also help product owners in their work? Oh, uh, and there's, there's a plethora of problems that a product owners face day to day. And, you know, I think it can range from you've got conflicting priorities and that might be from the market or your customers or users, but then also internally your stakeholders. So really trying to understand that prioritization which can sometimes be a little tricky. So there are a number of tools which you can use to help you to do that. And especially when you're prioritizing your backlog, but then also when looking at the longer term roadmap. So you're looking at, you know, outcomes, looking at the value versus the cost value versus risk, you know, using different tools to really understand, are we doing the right thing? And are we prioritizing um, the right thing, basically? Um, ensuring stakeholder alignment, so really getting the business to rally around the vision of the product, what you are doing, can sometimes be tricky because people expect different things, people want different things. You know, as I often say, you can't build a product that 
satisfies everyone. You have to satisfy the majority um, of your customer segment uh, or persona um, that you're building this product for. So it's it really can um, be one of the challenges as a product owner, but then also not having autonomy because I feel uh, as a product owner, you want to have ownership of that product. You want to feel like you you do have autonomy and you're not being you know really dictated to all the time about what should go into the product and why you want to go on that journey of exploration yourself and feed into um, what needs to go into the product and what will make it successful. Okay, um, I, I, this is from the uh, episode you actually um, published on Wednesday, two days ago. Oh, yeah. uh, because, you know, like you, you are listening to this podcast and of course I'm taking out what's most uh, um, actual for me, like yeah. most more current. And one of the things uh, your, your guest mentioned uh, was that it's so hard to focus on the problem rather than solution. So this is the you know top advice um I take out. But yeah. what are like do you have any other like easy tips for a product owner to focus on daily? I don't know, put sticky notes on your wall to not forget about this or something. <laughs> um, do you know what key what's key for me is to just really remember that you are not the user because sometimes we can get so wrapped wrapped up in our product that we know what's best for the user. But I think once you really rely on the research, so make sure you're doing that user research, whether it be interviews or focus groups or you know surveys or usability testing, whatever it may be, try to extract the, the the journey for your product through research and through data. Uh, every product that you build should have some sort of data analytics. So through um, Google Analytics or if you're using Azure Analytics or anything like that, you know, you should be able to bring out the quantitative data, but also match that with qualitative data. Talk to your customers is key for me, you know, because otherwise you can't really validate what you're doing without doing that at uh, first. So really Having questions. Questions are key because you need to have questions uh, or assumptions and turn those into hypotheses so you can test them, validate what you're doing and really be confident that you're building the right thing for your customer. So I'll definitely think um, knowing that you are not the customer and relying on that data to 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 show you if you're going in the right direction would be key, would be a, a, a key tip from me. Okay. Uh, uh, this is probably just for, for another like conversation, but I like what I always find the most uh, challenging there is like if you talk to the customer, uh, how not to believe that this, especially in B two B products, like how not to get overwhelmed by the specific customer and the yeah. whole priorities, and to you know uh, remember that you're not building for a single. Uh, user or customer for yeah. Case, right? yeah absolutely and that's where segmentation comes in uh, because you can have many segments for that usual product and they all have a different case they all have a different problem that the product is solving so have as many segments that you need and and focus on what each of those what each of those segments do need you know there's some there's uh, a bank in the UK called Lloyd's CSB and I think they have over a hundred segments you know, it, it, it just depends on what suits your organization and how many products you have and who you're trying to target. That's the key. Just remember who you're trying to build for. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't build for everyone. You can't satisfy every single user or customer, but you have to try and um, understand the problem so you can satisfy the majority. Yep. That's right. That's what I'm going to put on my sticky notes. <laughs> uh, no, I'm um, asking because, you know, like uh, I work as a business analyst and uh, in PGS, we don't uh, have product owners. We usually have product owners on the our client side. Uh, but due to the nature of working where we are mostly remote team, uh, it is often, I'm not saying it's a rule, but it's happening that delivery manager together with business analysts are taking over a bit from the product owner, a bit mm -hmm. becoming a product owner proxy because we're always there. Yeah. Um, but the whole issue is how can we as a you know extended team, how can we support the product owner? 
are there any you know, universal uh, things to look at? Like, what do you expect from the perfect team to support you? Yeah, yeah. I think with remote teams, they definitely are key in helping the acceleration of products and allowing features to be delivered quicker to our users, to our customers, and ensuring the right thing is being built and the requirements are fully understood, you know, facilitating and working with the, re the remote development team. You know, the team do become a close extension of the onshore teams and you both work together to ensure that product success. So I think really key for, you know, remote product ownership or, you know, being a business analyst is understanding as well, because because you're an extension of that product owner role with the teams that you're working with, you know, on the cust on your customer side. Uh, it's really trying to understand the business problem. What are we trying to achieve with the product? Because I feel if you understand that, it's very, it, it will become easier to work together because you understand the problems, you understand the direction, and it becomes easier for you to kind of field those blockers with the, the development team on your side. And you are becoming that proxy, as you say, without needing to rely so much on the product owner because you understand the business problem and the solution yourself. And it, at the end of the day, it just becomes one big team working together. Um, and building products that customers love. Yep, that's what we're aiming for. Like we're yeah. aiming for, you know, having the communication close. So we are actually a one team after all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's key. That's key when you're working with offshore um, or nearshore teams. Absolutely. So uh, what I understood from from your from your uh, chats is that uh, the successful team probably is the team that works together on one absolutely yeah yes yeah, definitely uh, and this is uh, lucinda how would you, you would for example define as a successful team how would you build that kind of team is it a kind of role model that we you know define a successful team that works together um to achieve one goal or would you add something else also to that absolutely and you know a part of what i love is building and scaling product teams you know i think it's really really important to have passionate people who are keen and uh, keen on building great products that customers love they're interested in research and data and problem solvers you know you have to be a problem solver you have to want to solve a specific problem because that's what most of the, our, our products do you know and I think you know as you mentioned it's really key to have a collaborative work ethic be able to work as a team, um, enjoy that collaboration, but be able to work autonomously and work in a solo. Uh, because if you are a product owner, that, that you have to touch many aspects of an organization. You know, you're working with sales, you're working with marketing, you're working with delivery teams, you're working with the development team, you know, you're working with key start stakeholders throughout the business. So communication is absolutely key as well. And I think ensuring the team is diverse Because different people from different backgrounds have different experiences, and this only contributes towards great software products in the. Uh, okay, so to wrap it up, I think uh, I have one more question because obviously, yeah. uh, like the driver for us to meet was the prod books podcast, and I wanted to ask why a podcast. Why did you choose this form of communication? <laughs> I think I prefer a podcast because I like talking. <laughs> so I thought I'd talk and rather do like a vlog um, or start a channel on, on like YouTube. Um, I thought, let me just do a podcast. It's really easy. Um, yeah. And I thought, let me just try something new. I like to talk. Um, hopefully you like listening to my voice and it's not annoying. Or anything like that. So, <laughs> so yeah, and, and and I just chose that forum, and it seems that um, you know I've had feedback that people are enjoying it, which is great. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I have one more question around the the, the prog books because um, uh, you you have on the prog books there are three episodes right now. Are you yes. planning any more? And what are the potential topics that we can also expect? Yes, yeah, so um, the next episode, which hopefully will be out in December, is going to be around agile transformation and product management. So if you are working in an, a waterfall way and you want to transfer, you want to um, go through an agile transformation, uh, we will be talking about. So I have another 
a guest speaker for that episode. So we will be talking about, you know, some of the challenges, some of the things to think about when you're going through that transformation as product managers as well. And hopefully in the new year, there will be uh, another on user experience and product management. So how to really understand user experience and design when it comes to product management. Yeah, it seems like there is a lot of in the There's back. a lot coming, yep, yep. And there's going to be even more after that. So, you know, watch this space. <laughs> yeah, we are looking okay. forward to, to to listen to that. Great. Uh, yeah. Yep, great. Uh, okay, so the next one is the Agile Transformation. I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, yep, we're going to find Protobox on its dedicated site, right? Uh, so... What's the direction? So you can, the Prodbox podcast is available on all, um, on all popular podcast platforms. So Spotify, Google podcasts, Apple podcasts, um, Deezer, TuneIn, Alexa, et cetera. So you'll find it on all the popular podcast sites. Um, if you want to listen to the RSS feed, then just navigate to the podbox.co.uk and you can access the podcasts from there. Um, if you want to get into contact with me, then uh, you can go to my Instagram or Twitter, which is at the podbox or contact me on the podbox.co.uk or LinkedIn, of course, where you can just search for Tinder Forche and I should pop up. Yep. <laughs> so there's no way to miss it. No Thank way. You. <laughs> okay, great. Right. Thank you. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for this lovely chat today. And so we are looking forward to hearing more from you, Lucinda, uh, to hear more of the, the, the prod box and more of the, the podcast. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.